Friends, welcome. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God, nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Thank you for coming this evening to this special service. For some of you, it may be your first time here, and we also welcome those of you who are watching on the live stream. I hope that you find the service welcoming and honest and affirming. Today was the shortest day of the year, or the longest night of the year. Christmas isn't just a bright, cheery holiday for everyone. The darkness can enhance sadness or depression. Being alone is felt much more intensely and acutely. Losses pushed to the recesses of our minds can resurface painfully. We're reminded of those who've gone on before us. Even good memories can be tinged by a later loss. We're almost three years into living in a COVID world, and more than any time I can remember, there is loss in isolation and separation. Nearly everyone's been impacted in a negative way by the pandemic. On Sundays, when I welcome people to worship, I remind them of two things. One, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, that you're welcome here and that our church is affectionately known as the light on the hill. So friends, you are welcome here. And though tonight we gather in semi-darkness and we don't want to minimize or try to explain away or put a happy face on the pain or the grief that may be present in this gathering, we also gather to see if we can find a bit of hope, remembering that the darkness cannot overcome the light and being in community, even virtual, community is good for our souls. So thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting that this is a safe place. Thank you for being authentically you. Because there's no reason, at least here, to hide who you are or how you feel. We'll begin with a call to worship. It's responsive, which means you're encouraged to reply with the words that are printed in bold. The words will be on your screens. Let us be in worship together. Tonight we gather here in this place of refuge. We are lost. We are lonely. We are afraid. Tonight we gather daring to wonder if God has indeed come in Jesus, discerning the rejection we have known, intimate with our failed relationships, holding our heartache in hands of tenderness. Tonight we gather with neighbors and strangers, a family made one by our brokenness, Amen. with our hearts full of hope Amen. and our pockets filled Amen. with doubt. Tonight we gather just as we are. God has to meet us here and welcome us for who we are. We're going to sing a couple of times tonight, and we're going to begin by singing just the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You can remain seated. The words will be on the screens. gather here tonight in the presence of God's comforting love to remember. Here we are safe to feel what we feel, 
to acknowledge our sadness, to share our concerns, release our anger, face our emptiness, and to know that God cares. Tonight we share God's words of strength and hope and stand together with each other in comfort and support. So come, Christ Jesus, be with us now and throughout this holiday season. Come, people of God, let us be in community together. Amen. I have a couple of choices from Scripture to share with you this evening. The first is Psalm 121. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. I raise my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God won't let your foot slip. Your protector won't fall asleep on the job. No, Israel's protector never rests or sleeps. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade right beside you. The sun won't strike you during the day, neither will the moon at night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. God will protect your very life. The Lord will protect you on your journeys, whether coming or going, from now until forever from now. We have in our service tonight a couple of um, bits of music just for reflection, and the first one is uh, Silent Night.
Our second scripture reading comes from the second letter of Paul to the church in Corinth from the fourth chapter, reading from the message. Remember, our message is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Master. All we are is messengers, errand runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up the darkness, and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. If you look only at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God has not left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which make Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. We continue with prayers of intercession. It's a responsive prayer again, so please respond with the words in bold. All around us are the sights and sounds of Christmas, gentle God, the laughter of parties, the songs of carolers, the shouts of children sledding down hills, the music in every store. But deep within us, we carry our pain. Our grief walks with us every step we take. Loneliness is a shawl we drape over our shoulders on empty nights. So in this time, when every night stretches into eternity, we come to you bringing our gifts, not gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but the grief that is the empty space in the closet filled with memories, the loss that is a sore which never heals, the bitterness that tastes like two-day-old coffee. We have come from different backgrounds, from different families, from other faith traditions, but we have all lived in the far country of despair, wandering the land of shame, built our lives in those neighborhoods peopled by empty dreams. We have stood inside of every room we have gone into, hoping against hope that someone would ask us to dance, but find the wall is our only friend. In a season when so many people don't have enough hours in a day to get their lists checked off, their cards mailed, their presents wrapped, we have all the time in the world to remember the loss that has stolen the joy of the season to grieve over a job, a dream, a loved one we have lost, to sit in the shadows of our homes, too weary to turn on the lights, to wander the streets lit by decorations on all the houses, but not by the light of the world. Our fear of the future, our remembrance of the past, our pain which is difficult to bear and harder to release, our emptiness which cannot be filled with platitudes, our hands which cannot hold the ones we wish to embrace, all make this a season of long nights. In our loneliness, in our longing, in our loss, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another song for reflection. Amazing grace, how sweet your sound that saved a wretch like me. i <laughs> 
In scripture we hear a voice heard in Rama weeping when great morning Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. It's difficult to hear scripture from the second chapter of Matthew in the same way after reading of another school shooting or natural disaster, but those lines occurring in scripture so soon after the story of Christ's birth remind us that Jesus did not come into a safe, sanitized world of Christmas cards and children's pageants, but that Jesus, God in human flesh, was born into a real world of sadness and hatred and violence and fear. The craziness and evil in our world can lead us to ask, where is God? Because of the birth of Jesus, because Emmanuel, God with us, came into the world, we can say God is there. God's right there. In John, we hear the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Of course, it's not just a tragedy in the news that can make us wonder where is God. The reality of our own lives can stretch our faith, can leave us wondering if we are alone and if there really is anything besides this reality. When the doctor says, your test shows something that concerns me, we may wonder, where is God? When the bills come and there's not enough money in the bank account and there seems to be no hope of ever catching up, much less getting ahead, we may wonder, where is God? When our children make bad choices and even reject us, when our spouse lets us down or leaves us, we can wonder, where is God? When we're confronted with disappointment and pain of all sorts that are part of life in the real world, we wonder, where is God? Jesus is God's answer to that question. God is in the manger. God is on the cross. God is walking out of the tomb. God is here. For me, it seems that recently I have been spending a lot of time reassuring folks that God is here. First came the phone call about the unexpected death and the visit with a member who wonders why God doesn't do something about their constant pain. And then the next visit asked the question, why did God take my husband? The reality is that God does not answer our why questions very often. We can talk about theology, about how there's evil in the world because of sin and free will, and, but let's be honest, the discussion about theology doesn't comfort someone who's hurting very much. Anyway, I don't believe that we can answer the question of why any particular thing happens to any particular person. Maybe someday we'll get those answers, but I'm hoping by then they won't matter as much. God doesn't give us all the answers, but God does give us God. God loves us so much that God never leaves us alone to face any trial or tragedy. Yes, God is here, not just in a spiritual way, but in ways we can experience with our senses. God is here in God's word that we can hear together. God is present in communion at the table that we taste and see. We feel God's touch here in the support of a gentle pat on the arm or shoulder. shoulder. We can feel God's love in a hug. When Isaiah proclaims, comfort, comfort my people, the source of that comfort is God's abiding presence. In Romans, we're promised that nothing can separate us from the love of God, nothing in life, not even death. When you were baptized, God promised to live with you, to dwell in you forever, no matter what. And God keeps God's promises. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, God promises the people that the Messiah, God's anointed Savior, is coming. God made the promise to Abraham when that father of God's people was called, all people of the world will be blessed through your descendant. The promise was repeated again and again through the prophets. 
And then in Bethlehem, a thousand years after that promise to Abraham, and 2,000 years ago from our perspective, those promises were fulfilled when an unmarried mother gave birth to a baby boy and laid him in a manger. And let's not forget that that baby boy was born into a real world, a world where a powerful empire could cruelly dominate the Jewish people in which that boy was born. It was a world where a pregnant woman and a betrothed could not find anyone who would take them in, and they had to deliver their child in a place where animals fed. It was a world in which a cruel king, Herod, was so jealous and afraid that he had all the boys two years old and younger to be killed to try to get rid of this newborn king. It was also a world in which that baby would grow up and be hung on a cross until he died, even though he was the only person who ever lived who didn't deserve that, much less to be humiliated and executed as a criminal Jesus is a real savior born into a real world, the world in which we live. He wasn't immune to disappointments and sadness and suffering and grief that we all experience. In fact, I think that's kind of the point. Whatever it is that we may be going through, whatever is that interfering with our ability to celebrate Christmas, whether it's in the news and in our lives and our very being, Jesus understands because he's been there. Or maybe more accurately, he's been here. If you're having trouble getting into the Christmas spirit, I don't think that Jesus is disappointed in you or angry with you or critical of your lack of faith. The reality is that when we struggle and get disappointed, we get disappointed in ourselves in anger at ourselves, we wonder about our own faith. But Jesus, that baby in the manger, that man on the cross, he only responds to our struggling with empathy and offers himself to us with those words that he said at the Last Supper and that we hear every time we receive communion, my body broken for you. For you. Christmas is for you. Not even though you're struggling this year, but especially if you are. For you. Amen. So I'd like to invite everyone to come forward if you would like and just sort of make a semicircle around the area in front of the pews. Bring your candle with you. Friends, each of us comes bearing our own hurts and sorrows and broken places. And I want to offer to each of you to offer that wound to the God who loves each of us deeply and wants to help carry our pain. God waits patiently, gently calling out, give, you, give me your pain, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will refresh you. So in a moment, I will invite you to come forward, light your candle from the pillar on the altar table, light it while naming aloud or in silence as you are comfortable, the burden that brought you with us this evening. Light your candle, remembering that the darkness does not overcome the light. The dawn always follows the darkest day, and that Jesus, even Jesus dying on the cross cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So come, friends. Let's name our tender places and take a bit of that power away, a little of the weight away from the sack of stones we came in with. 
So I invite you in any order, when you're ready, uh, come light your candle and you can say out loud or to yourself just one of the things that you're carrying around today. And friends, if you're watching on the live stream, we invite you to light your candle now as well. Tonight we claim and embrace the darkness that is present both in the world and in our own lives. As people who are familiar with the darkness, we also know that we gather to be illumined by the light of the Christ child this Christmas season. May the Christ child born in a lowly stable, himself an outcast and marginalized, bring light and comfort and peace and joy this holiday season. Look around at each other. You may not know every person's story, but you can see their pain. Beyond that, you can also see the light illuminating their presence. Sometimes it's easier to see the light in others than it is in ourselves. These lights in their brightness are only symbols, but as they burn and finally go out, we remember that suffering passes though memories last forever. 
So friends, may we be gentle with ourselves. Remember that we are created in the image of God. May we go into the world with honesty and thanksgiving, embracing tears and laughter in all that is good. May the protection of God comfort us. May the courage of Jesus sustain us. And may the tenderness of the Spirit embrace us. And let all God's people say, Amen. Well, we're going to sing one more time. We're going to sing Silent Night and try not to sing it in a minor key this time. Uh, and then uh, we'll, I'll tell you how we're going to end after that. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so Concludes our service. You're, you can extinguish your candle when you're ready to do that. There's no hurry. You are invited to linger, to sit in silence in the holy space you have helped create. Depart with the peace of Christ, who travels with us in the lowest valleys as well as the highest peaks. May God heap blessings upon you. Amen.